Hey guys, Lucas from iExplore here. Tonight, we're gonna to do some street photography in Shimbashi. And before that, I just wanna thank everyone who supports us on Patreon. Big thank you to you guys. To everyone who doesn't support us on Patreon, big thank you to you guys anyway, just for watching these videos. I really appreciate that. Anyway, we'll get on to it. I explore. All right, so Shimbashi is easily one of my favorite neighborhoods to shoot. And I mean, right away you can see why it's got this, you know, kind of, vividness to it it's gritty it's neon it's got all that and so let's start with shooting this view maybe let's get a little closer to get some of this clutter out of the foreground out of the way maybe i'll wear my mask here a little bit because it's crowded okay and this view here is fantastic now i've shot this countless times we're going to take it nice and slow i don't have my tripod tonight of course but we're going to shoot it on a really slow shutter let's go Ten, a tenth of a second, let's go a fifth of a second. There we go, and perfect timing for the train. And I just fired off a whole bunch because, you know, some of them might be on a fifth, you know, it's, it's risky. But yeah, that looks awesome right away. Beautiful shot really nice start <laughs> to this video um, i should mention what i'm shooting with today i got my trusty 28 f1.4 for the f mount so this i had this lens for a couple of years more than a few years now five years or so i love this 28 i've been sort of distracted with all the z lenses i got recently like you know those veal trucks lenses i got the new like the nikon z zooms mainly because i need them for work it's good to have zooms but I, I kind of forgot about this great lens, so I'm glad to, glad to be back on it tonight. And it, part of what triggered that is that I got the new FTZ2 adapter, which honestly is the same as the FTZ1 adapter, but it doesn't have that nub down there. So it just feels nicer, you know, it's more holdable. I think it was always in the way. So we're going to shoot with this. I've been shooting it with my, my good old 28 for a few days now, but, you know, tonight I decided to make a video about it. So we're going to go over there into this busy area. So Shimbashi, for those of you who don't know, is kind of a nightlife spot. There's a lot of bars, clubs, some more seedy than others around here. It's what's also commonly called in Japan a uh, fuzoku, which literally means, I believe, literally means water trade or something like that, right? The show? No, fuzoku means water trade, right? What does the word fuzoku literally mean? That's Mizu Shobai, right. Okay, so Axel clarified something for me. But yeah, Fuzoku literally, I mean, I know what it means actually. It just means red light district. But there's a, there's a euphemism for it, which is Mizu Shobai, which means water trade. That's the one I was thinking of. And that's also a euphemism for like bars and, you know, CD stuff. So yeah, this is kind of a red light district. So, you know, we might run into some uh, more seedier establishments. For now, let me see if I can shoot this nice cafe here, which unfortunately just closed because when the lights are on in there, it's very pretty, but oh well. Just gonna shoot it anyway, I love this place. Very photogenic. Got the girl in there. Yeah, you know, let's keep going. Go this way. Simple but cool. Might as well shoot it. Yeah, nice. It'd be nice to get a better silhouette. Somebody really interesting going by. Let's keep going, I guess. But yeah, as I was saying, red light district, kind of seedy. But not unsafe. It's not like a red light district in other countries. In Japan, it's always totally safe. So I never worry about exploring places like this with my camera. I see, here you go. You see, there's a, there's a nice massage place, you know? <laughs> that gives you an idea of the kind of neighborhood this is. Yeah. We've definitely done a number of videos in Kabukicho, which is the other red light district. It's kind of a pattern that 
photography is good in red light districts in Tokyo. I love this scene here with this just this splashes of color and the kind of uh, what is that stainless steel or something over there? Beautiful. This is one that we can take on a slower shutter and then do a 30th and f4. Fantastic. Those of you who've seen the recent unstreet photography video that we posted, this is kind of an unstreet photography scene, right? Because there's no people, nothing, it's just signs. But I like it. Also in this direction, you can see the train up there, which is really cool. People going by. And then the massage parlor sign in the foreground. Nice combo. Yeah, I should mention my settings as well. I always forget because, you know, I explained it in so many videos, I kind of take it for granted that those of you who watch this channel already know. But of course, we get newcomers as well. So to reiterate or to, to be clear, I'm using aperture mode. I have it set to uh, a max ISO of 6400 and also a minimum shutter speed of 1 over 250. So using auto ISO. That's what I'm usually shooting on. But when I'm shooting these slower scenes, when I just said, like, I'll do a 30th, or when I did a fifth for the train earlier, then I just flip it to M, but I keep the auto ISO set so that I'm still not controlling the aperture, or sorry, the exposure directly, but I'm able to, you know, uh, choose a different shutter speed than the minimum that I have when I'm shooting an AV. Let's go that way. So between those two settings, it covers everything I need pretty much. And then I just use the exposure compensation to adjust. And a common question I get is, Lucas, at night, why do you keep it on minus all the time? And the reason is, because there's a lot of darkness around me and so the camera tends to overexpose when there's a lot of dark scenes or dark parts of the scene like in this dark alley that we're in and um, so therefore I keep it on minus in this case 0.7 or minus 1 or around there. I'm going to shoot in this direction as well because there's a cool view here. I love these wires. This is an extra dark scene so I'm going to go to M and a 30th. And also I'm going to underexpose a bit more. I'm going to go to minus 1.3 because it's a little bit bright. And as we were chatting just now, somebody walked through here. So I kind of want to wait. I'm not going to wait forever, but it'd be nice to wait for someone to come through down the street. Oh, here we go. Beautiful. I might even get a little lower for this. Nice. The beauty as well of back button focus, those of you who've watched these videos for a while now know that I always use the back button focus. I had already focused where I wanted to before that guy came. I didn't need to focus again, I just took the photos because I knew they were already set how I wanted them to be set. And sure enough, that was pretty good. A little bit motion blurred because I shot it on the 30th, but that's okay. I don't mind some slight motion blur for the silhouette subject. But I'm going back to AV and currently on F2 because it's dark. And I want to keep my eyes so low. And I want to use my F1.4 lens as, you know, to its fullest potential. Let's go this way. That reminds me a while ago, many years ago now, when I first got this lens or early on, uh, like a street photography acquaintance of mine came to Japan and he's like, hey man, let's hook up, let's shoot. It's like, sure man, we met up, we we're doing some shooting. And he asked me something that, like, I'll be honest, kind of annoyed me. He's like, oh, what do you got? The, you got the lens. And I told him, I said, it's an F1.4, 28, blah, blah. And he was like, ah, do you ever even use F1.4? Kind of insinuating that, like, why do you need such a big aperture lens? Like, you're never going to use it. And I was just like, bro, look around you. It's dark. <laughs> of course I use it sometimes. I don't use it regularly because obviously the DOF is so shallow on F1.4 that it's tricky to use. But it certainly has its uses. And I have used it, and I will use it, and maybe tonight we'll use it in a couple of spots. So, But 1.4 is wide open. I usually use it on 2 at night, because it's actually a very sharp lens, even on 2. Um, and I get plenty of light on 2. It's not that dark in Tokyo. i shoot this thing here. This is, a, this is a photo. I might just show the photo that I have already of this, because this is kind of a, like a holy grail photo for me where I've walked past this place many a time and it's 
I don't really know what's in there, but it's clearly something like for adults only because there's that logo that says 18 only. You can't come in. Um, so it's something like suspiciously dirty because there's no like, logos or anything. But around this area, we, you know, when I explored was in full swing, when we actually had people coming to Japan and taking our workshops, we would, I would bring people here to this uh, spot, not, not to shoot this necessarily, but just to shoot this area. And we would walk by this all the time. And one time I saw somebody coming out of there and there was this silhouette in the door and it looked so cool that I missed it. And I keep coming back to this spot. And eventually I did get it, but there was a sign on the door. I didn't like that, so it kind of ruins it. So I still want to get a shot of this with somebody just coming out just before they open the door, have them in there and create this kind of spooky effect. But I think we will not be so lucky tonight. It's very unlikely. It would be really amazing if I could get somebody in the door and also on the stairs at the same time. That would be really something. But again, very unlikely. Alright, but we're gonna give up. We're gonna keep going. I think I will not be lucky tonight. I'll have to come back yet again to this spot, which as I've said many times, is something that I do is it's good to revisit spots again and again and again because you never know what, if you might get a shot especially if you have already conceptualized a possible shot but even if you have it you don't know what's going to be good there but you just you know that this spot's interesting but you're missing some subject or something it's good to come back again and again I think that's what all the good street photographers do they just have like routes that you just kind of revisit over and over again right, double check all my settings here I'm going to go back to f2 as I said my go to snapshot here. I love the pot of flowers over there. Beautiful colors around here. Let's see. That way leads back to where we came from so we're gonna go this way. You know tonight's a Monday. I was a little apprehensive about shooting this video on Monday in this neighborhood because it's usually busier, livelier towards the end of the week. But tonight we had you know, Axel and I were able to, you know, our schedules coincided, so we just did it tonight. And honestly, when it's kind of like semi-dead like this, that's also interesting. Because the darkness sort of enhances the light. Yeah, and the way uh, to this neighborhood, Axel and I were on the train, and he asked me, like, okay, so what's the theme of this video tonight? What's this video going to be about? And I said, it's going to be about taking pictures <laughs> basically I said I'm gonna title the video just shooting I don't know if that's what the title ultimately ended up but the point is I had no real theme for tonight I just brought one of my favorite lenses that I haven't really used too much oh, here's a cool shot this guy doing you know the receipts but you can't see his face I love that you know there was a time in my uh, photography I was gonna say career. I don't mean career in this case. It's just in my, in my uh, during my early obsessions with photography and street photography, where I really wanted to shoot people and see their faces, because that was kind of hard. It was like grabbing the the lion by the tail. If you guys are familiar with that, it's probably totally made up, but it's like a rite of passage for for men in Africa in the ancient times, where they had to run to the lion and grab him by the tail and then run away to prove you're like a man or whatever. Who knows? That might be total BS. I have no idea. But to me, taking photos of people to get in their face early on was kind of like that. It was sort of this scary thing where I had to prove that I'm a street photographer by doing that. And I eventually kind of got like comfortable with that, as comfortable as you can get. I'm not that comfortable with it, even to this day, as I often say. I'm still a little shy. I'm pretty comfortable with it, to the, to the point that I can do it. But more than that, I kind of got over it. Where like, I don't want to shoot someone with their face unless it's actually interesting and actually prefer when their face is obscured in some way like for that shot just there so when I see someone obscured but I can see their hands or something I find that a little bit more interesting I'm also going to shoot this nice kind of standard scene I'm going to have to back up a little bit though because my lens is not that wide at 28 there we go beautiful scene I've actually eaten in this restaurant that I'm shooting right now and it's quite tasty <laughs> this guy posed I love it yeah it's called a, the style of restaurant is called a robata and the robata refers to the grill that they have I don't think we can really see it through this window maybe actually can sneak a video in there but it's a type of grill 
and they grill stuff in front of you. See, so maybe if, if it's again, maybe it's visible there, but the, the chef will grill it right in front of you on this grill. And the grill itself, I believe, don't not 100% sure, as my Japanese is not perfect, but I believe the grill itself is called a robata, it's a type of grill. And so there's a lot of robata restaurants around here, including that one over there, which is which is closed. But I still want to point it out. I would love to take some photos of it, but it says up there. Um, Robata, right there in the, the kanji, right? And that one is really cool because the people there are very friendly. When I went there once, just they do, I think on Tuesdays and Saturdays, or at least they used to pre COVID, they do um, uh, rakugo, which is a type of play, like a Japanese spoken word performance. They would do it there. And the one time I went there, like there was like a nice sense of community. Like it seemed like half the people in there were regulars, so it was very nice energy. but. I don't think it's open these days, probably because of the, the lockdowns and stuff. Anyway, keep going around here. And then from this angle, again, those of you who've taken the Tokyo Metropolis photo workshop back in the day when we used to do it in the evenings, now we schedule it in the morning, but it used to be a late afternoon thing. We would get here around blue hour and I would many times tell people we're going to shoot this view because this view is fantastic although it's, it's not as good right now as it would be at blue hour when you could still see more blue in the sky there but but nonetheless it's really good so I'm gonna go to here to all the way down to the 30th and let's say f4 okay just to get a lot of depth of field and what I like about this view I'm gonna get a little bit closer just because this bright sign is in my shot and it's a little distracting but what I like about this view is how it it sort of um, juxtaposes the, you know, wire-filled, dingy sort of cyberpunk Blade Runner streets and then that skyscraper back there, which again would be a little more apparent earlier in the day, but still pretty nice right now. It gives that nice contrast between the high city and the low city, which I really love. That is very much one of those Tokyo elements, Tokyo stories. Let's go straight here. Good sushi shop here. I've eaten there a bunch of times. Not the best sushi in the world, but great, as we say in Japanese, great kospa, which means cost performance. So like, you know, good bang for buck. It's a kaiten sushi, which means a conveyor belt sushi place. Pretty, pretty lively for a Monday night, as you can see. Quite a lot of people around. Ooh, let's shoot that over there. It's something I never shot before, but I love these kind of, let's get across here quickly before the cars come. Uh-oh, uh-oh, the cameraman's gonna get run over. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I like this, this sign here, which just says medicine. It says yaku, because this is a pharmacy. But I love when I have like a backlit sign like this. Although, admittedly, this would probably be better on a longer lens than this 28 because if I get too close, you know, people won't go between me and the sign. But if I'm too far, then I get a lot of other stuff in the shot, which is, um, which is not that, you know, it's not that interesting. Like if I had a very long lens, I could just zoom in, like a 50 or a 70 even. If I had my 24 to 70 with me, it would work. But, you know, whatever. I have what I have. Let's just see what we can do. A ton of people all at once. Let's see here. Of course, I don't want to go like a crowd, I just want one person. Yeah, I try getting a little lower. Not lower is not good because then people are too tall. There's also the point that we want like a really good silhouette, somebody, you know, doing something interesting with a cool hat or something. 
man, I've had some bad luck. It's always like when one person's coming, then just at that moment, another person pops in the frame. But, yeah, right? That's uh, street photography for you. All right, let's keep going. These were not mind-blowing. I don't think it will be that good anyway. Not worth waiting. Let's keep moving. I just love the aesthetic of like those big backlit street signs like that or advertising signs, you know, with a big giant kanji, even though it just says medicine. Actually, that's kind of interesting in, in itself, right? All right, back to F2. Back to uh, aperture mode. At that moment, I put it on M and I cranked it up to a 500th of a second, just in case, uh, you know, people are walking by a little bit fast. I find that to get really crisp silhouettes when people are walking by directly across your frame, even at walking speed, 250, they might be a little bit blurry, but 500 is tack sharp. So really like 500 is the, probably the, the best speed for anything like people moving. But I don't usually use 500 for the most part because it's dark and that's a whole nother stop darker than 250. And then, you know, the noise gets higher because the ISO needs to be higher. We're going to go this way into this little side alley here. Over here. And already nice. There's a shrine in there, which is what this entrance is about. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, before starting this video, Axel and I were discussing like, have we done a video in Shinbashi before? And we both were like, yeah, but we couldn't remember what the video was. I just remembered now, it was the video about big camera versus small camera, and we shot this scene. But I'm gonna shoot it again anyway, because not everybody necessarily has seen that video. So I might as well get this shot, because it's a cool one. Nice. But I'm not gonna shoot a million of them. One more of that guy in there when he gets a little closer to the window. There we go. Oh yeah. Okay, let's keep going. I have tons of shots of that, so let's not overdo it. But that's a nice one. Nice scene. And we'll go through this awesome shrine. Love this shrine because it's got this modern concrete architecture, even though it's a traditional thing. Um, I do like that street though too, but I want to go through the shrine, hmm. Let's just go through the shrine, because it's interesting. Wow, great, we have these banners up. Let's get a shot here. I'm still on a 50th and a 4, because for this scene, it's fine. This man praying is quite far away. Very nice. So the slow shutter wasn't really an issue for him. So even though he was moving a bit, he was moving slow enough and far away enough that it didn't really uh, affect the image affect the sharpness. In this case, I think sharpness is the correct term in terms of motion blur. There was not too much motion blur. So one thing I love about coming to the shrine is that there's a back exit <laughs> that we can go out of here and then we're back in the dingy dark streets. And I love that. And so, you know, going back to our workshops, I used to bring people here and this is what I would do. We would go through the shrine and come out this back exit because it's really cool. So, kitchen in here backs of the restaurants are uh, visible, which is cool. Now here it's darker than usual because again it's a Monday. But you know, whatever. Let's see if we can get something interesting. A cool reflection here. We're definitely we're going to go slow shutter. Maybe just the 20th. Just one. But if I slide in here, is that better? It's better. It's still kind of a messy scene without a real focal point. So we'll just keep going. And then the atmosphere is nice. Nice little bicycle. A 
couple of weeks ago I came through here and there was a guy with his friends, they were drinking, and he had an accordion. And he was just playing an accordion on the street, and a Japanese guy, and I thought, well, that's cool. Accordion is not exactly a traditional Japanese instrument, so that was sort of out of place in a good way. Here's some nice uh, unstreet style pipes. Let's go really slow shutter here. I'm gonna go to a tenth and F4. And then really underexpose it because the camera's going crazy with the exposure here. Because there's so much dark stuff. And I really only want to expose for those for those highlights. Nice, beautiful light on these pipes. Do one like this as well. I'm not aiming up at all. Again, I would love to be like up in the air, you know, on the same level as there, so I don't have to aim up at them. So I'm gonna shoot this way as well because there's this guy standing here. Maybe I can get him as a bit of a silhouette. I don't need to be minus three anymore. That was just for the pipes. And then also, I'm going to go back a bit, I'm going to use this shutter, I love using shutters and I don't know if I've demonstrated that before on, the, on our channel, but when you shoot along the shutter like this, you can get really nice effects. And in fact, let's go to f1.4 for this shot. Another nice scene here with this bike. It's quite gorgeous. Let's go to F4. There's a guy in there watching me thinking, what is this idiot doing? I'm doing unstreet photos, bro. All right, let's go this way. Do this little street. Let's do one last shot in this direction. A simple shot, just to show the area a little bit. Nice. And at this point, we've kind of more or less come full circle where we started is just around the corner there. And I wanted to finish here in front of the good old locomotive here in, in what's called SL Square, Steam Locomotive Square. The reason that they put this old steam locomotive here is because Shinbashi, this station, was actually one of the first train stations in Japan. It wasn't this building. There's another building like a few hundred yards from here. That's the actual original old one, although even I think that building is not the original structure, they rebuilt it to commemorate it. But anyway, Shibashi was the first train station back when trains start, started operating in Japan. I believe that's why they put the steam locomotive here as a bit of a memento of those, those days. Anyway, that's about it for today though. I feel like uh, we had a nice walk around Shibashi. As always, I don't know if I got good photos or not, but they're probably all right. I hope you guys found that interesting, as always. And of course, if you have any questions or comments about what I was shooting, and I try to uh, explain everything and cover everything, even stuff I've covered before, like my settings, etc., etc. But inevitably, I always forget something. So if you have something you're wondering about and I didn't answer your question during the video, pop it in the comments and I'll get back to you. I do answer all of the comments. So far, so good. If we grow, I might not be able to keep up, but so far I have answered every single comment, which I'm pretty proud of. So I'll keep going. And of course, if you want to support us on Patreon or support this channel, Patreon is the best way. Clicking on the referral links for all the gear that I use and have used in other videos. Clicking on those in the comment below or the description below is also good. But just watching to the end of the video is a huge plus because it helps us promote the video. And of course, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I got to say all that stuff. I don't usually say it because you're going you're gonna to subscribe or you're not. That's up to you. It doesn't matter if I say it, right? Anyway. I'm rambling. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. And as always, challenge your eye.